Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to drive traffic to your affiliate offers using Pinterest. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss more affiliate marketing tutorials. Just as well, if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to hit the like button. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right into it. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is decide on a niche and pick out a few affiliate offers. I recommend finding one to three offers in the same niche. I use clickbank.com. If Clickbank isn't available in your uh, region, you could use Digistore24, you could use ShareASale, you could use any affiliate network, it doesn't matter. Um, but when you make a Pinterest account, you're gonna only be able to promote products in whatever niche you decide. So it's a good idea to find at least a few offers in that niche before you go all in. That way, in case an offer doesn't work out, you can promote other products as well. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right into it. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is decide on a niche and pick out a few affiliate offers. I recommend finding one to three offers in the same niche. I use clickbank.com. If clickbank isn't available in your uh, region, you could use Digistore24, you could use ShareASale, you could use any affiliate network, it doesn't matter. Um, but when you make a Pinterest account, you're gonna only be able to promote products in whatever niche you decide. So it's a good idea to find at least a few offers in that niche before you go all in. That way, in case an offer doesn't work out, you can promote other products as well. Um, and as far as finding a product on ClickBank, I recommend sorting by Gravity or going to the most popular offers. These are the offers that are proven to sell and you'll have an easier time making sales. Just as well, I recommend going for more expensive products you'll find that it takes the same amount of work to promote a, a cheaper product than it takes to promote a, high, a more expensive product. So you might as well promote the more expensive one. That way you get paid more when you do make the sale. So just to show you what this looks like as far as finding a product, I'm in clickbank.com in the affiliate marketplace right now. Um, if you need ideas for a niche, you can just go through here and check stuff out. Uh, parenting, families, health and fitness, super popular niche there, uh, green products, alternative energy. You can get into e-business, the make money online niche, uh, spirituality products. These are really popular on ClickBank. If you wanna see the most popular products, honestly, just go here and click this magnifying glass. It's gonna give you all the most popular products on ClickBank today. And honestly, most of these are health, uh, weight loss, diet products. Health is a super popular niche. Um, so you can definitely get, if you get into the health niche, you'll have plenty of products to choose from. Um, so there's a spirituality offer here. This is, um, there's plenty of products to choose from in the spirituality niche. Um, and again, before you really lock in on a niche, make sure you find at least a, a couple of products in that niche that you're comfortable promoting. And again, you wanna find at least a couple products in any one niche before you decide to lock in on that niche. I find it super helpful myself to create a Google document with all the affiliate links for the products I wanna promote. That way I can easily access all my links in one place. Once you've picked out a niche, once you've decided on a couple of products you wanna promote, the next thing you wanna do is go to pinterest.com and sign up for a free account. I recommend creating a business account. Um, the main reason is so you have access to analytics and you can see uh, some really awesome statistics as far as how well your pins are performing. Um, if you have a Gmail account, you can sign up for Pinterest in like two seconds. It's super simple, super quick and easy. Um, once you have the account, you want to create five boards. Um, I'll show you what these look like in a moment, but these are basically gonna be sub niches. So when it comes to naming your boards, um, you want to name them, um, like if you're in the health niche, you can name them uh, diet ideas, meal plans, like sub niches for whatever main niche uh, your account is based on. Um, and to start off, I would recommend going through Pinterest and repinning a few uh, other uh, people's pins onto your boards just so you don't have a blank empty account. Um, for the majority of the work you're going to be doing, it's just making and posting your own pins. But just so you don't have a completely empty account, I recommend repinning maybe 10 pins to each board before you really get going on your own pins. Um, if you do have a personal custom domain, which I recommend you do, um, you can connect that to Pinterest.com. Um, super simple. I'll show you with that in a moment. Um, but I recommend connecting your own domain and you can follow other users in your niche. Um, definitely check out other accounts for inspiration as to what your pins could look like. 
Um, as far as following them, I don't think it makes a huge difference, um, but it's definitely good to get some inspiration. Okay, so I'm actually gonna show you my own Pinterest account that I have um, in this uh, DIY home improvement niche. Um, I've used this account for a few weeks now, um, so I'm gonna show you a few of those things I just mentioned on the last slide. Uh, one of the main things you wanna do is, create, is connect your custom domain. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the settings and then I'll show you kind of the front end of what an account could look like. Okay, so I'm in the settings of this account. You see I have a really simple profile picture. I made this in Canva, completely free. It took me like two minutes, a super basic design there. Um, you look at my display name, I just have a catchy little name, Homestyle Hacks. Um, and then I do keywords. It's really powerful to put keywords in your actual display name. Uh, Pinterest is really a search engine before anything else. So it's really powerful to have uh, keywords everywhere you can. It will help you rank better. It will help you get more views on your pins and on your account in general. So you see I have DIY workshop and home improvement. These are just popular keywords in the uh, DIY space. Um, I have a username that doesn't really matter so much. It's just basically my display name. Um, you can add your pronouns if you want. Um, here I have a little bit about my profile. This is what people see when they click on my profile. Um, again, keywords are powerful, DIY hacks, home improvement products, uh, small space workshop, that's a keyword I'm trying to rank for as well. Um, this is all personal information, I didn't include any of that. But one of the uh, important things you do want to do is connect your domain. So you go over here to claim, and you see I have claimed my website to do this. Uh, you click claim, you're just going to click right here, it will copy the TXT record. You're gonna go into the DNS settings of uh, wherever you have your domain. I have mine in Google Domains. Um, I have it right here, as you can kind of see. Uh, it's just a TXT, um, whatever this is called, uh, custom record. And basically, you're just going to paste that. You're gonna to go to Manage Custom Records, and I already have it here, but you're just going to, you can leave hostname blank. Make sure this says TXT, leave the TTL the same, and the thing you copied from Pinterest, you're just gonna paste it right here, and then hit save. Um, I already did mine, so it's right there. You see your domain name should be here, TXT, TTL is an hour, and then the data is just what you copied from Pinterest, super simple. Um, so that way you claim your domain, and if you look at my profile, it's a claimed domain with that little check mark. If you have that little check mark, that means you did it right. Okay, so this is what the front of my account looks like. If you click on the Save tab, you see I have five boards I created. Um, these boards are all keywords that I'm uh, trying to rank for. Um, you see I have DIY home improvement, home workshop ideas, battery reconditioning, DIY home projects, and DIY solar projects. Um, some of these are related to the products I've chosen to promote. Um, and now if we, I'm gonna show you what the um, description for the board should look like, because that's something you have to create when you make your boards. Um, for the description, I recommend stuffing as many keywords in there as you can. You look at this one for DIY solar projects, I have keywords, DIY solar projects, uh, solar panels, solar lights, charge batteries, save money on electricity, solar powered systems. These are all uh, keywords in the solar niche. So the idea is that people type in those keywords and um, then they sh they're shown pins that are in this board. If you need, idea need ideas for keywords, what you wanna do is just go to uh, the main home feed on Pinterest, go to your search bar, start typing something in, like I could type in solar, and it's, it should give me a bunch of popular solar um, keywords to work for. So just type a little bit of whatever you're kind of thinking and then it will fill out the rest for the most popular keywords in that niche and you can use that for inspiration. So after you've created a Pinterest account, you're gonna need a landing page of some sort, um, a funnel. Uh, the last thing you ever wanna do is post affiliate links on your pins. You do not want a direct link to your affiliate link. You will get banned very quickly. Um, it's not gonna work out very well for you, okay? Um, so I definitely recommend setting up uh, some sort of landing page. It could be a one-page lander that just says, hey, here's a product or whatever. Click on the link and check it out. It could be a two-step funnel where you collect emails and then have a bridge page where you introduce the product. Um, listicles and quizzes also do very well on Pinterest. The majority of content on Pinterest are um, more detailed blog posts 
So if you do have a slightly longer landing page as far as text content, you'll definitely blend in better with the Pinterest content, uh, the type of content that people are used to seeing on Pinterest. Um, listicles is basically like a top 10 list. So what you could do is maybe pick out um, even a bunch of affiliate offers, like the top five best whatever, and then go down, write a quick little article about all those things, and then have obviously affiliate links to each one of those products. So if somebody clicks through and decides to buy any one of them, you can earn a commission. Uh, quizzes are another uh, great way to make a really interactive experience for the user um, where you just have a few questions and typically no matter how they answer they're going to end up um, on a product or an, on an affiliate offer which they can then purchase. This is what I was talking about before where you want to pick out a few different offers in the same niche. If you pick out offers that are similar, um, like if you pick out three or four different weight loss products, you could pretty much make three, um, one landing page and duplicate it a couple times and then just make small adjustments for each offer. If the offers are similar enough, you don't need to create a whole new landing page from scratch. You can kind of recycle a landing page that you've already created. Um, that way you don't need to make all these landing pages from scratch. Um, so it definitely helps to have offers that are somewhat similar. Um, that way you can test out different offers at the same time. Um, and again, don't direct link to your affiliate link. I do have uh, videos on my channel showing you how to set up a landing page. I'm not gonna go into that in this video in detail because um, that's a whole nother story. Now just to give you a quick example of a landing page, this is one of the pages I'm using to promote the Small Space Workshop product from ClickBank. Um, you see how to set up a complete small workshop on a budget. There's some images from the product. Um, so information about it and then some more information um, all set up pretty neatly, looks really professional, kind of reads like a blog post. Um, it's not just, hey, give me your email. There's actually a decent amount of info here before people take action on the button. But then I ask for the email and it goes to the second page and then the affiliate offer. Okay, so once you have some products to promote, you have a Pinterest account, you've created a landing page to drive traffic to, uh, you need to actually create content on Pinterest uh, to get people's attention. Um, so you're gonna have to create pins and as far as I know, every single person on Pinterest uses Canva to make their pins and you don't need to pay for the uh, premium version. I'm in the free plan, the free version has everything you need. If you want to upgrade to the premium plan, you can go ahead, it's really affordable, but the free plan has everything you'll ever need. Um, as far as getting images for your pins, I definitely recommend using stock photos that look really um, attractive and eye-catching to make really beautiful pins. Um, I recommend getting these from pexels.com, unsplash.com. Uh, there's plenty of other free stock photo sites you can use. Pexels is my favorite. Um, and again, I, I was talking before about following other accounts. You can do this for some inspiration. Don't just flat out copy other pins, um, but you can get inspiration from other people. Um, and Canva is great to have your pins organized. Um, I say recycle them. What I mean is after you've made a pin once, you can, you can just swap out the image that you used for a different one and all of a sudden it's a whole new pin. Um, now you don't want to post the same pins over and over again. You do want to create new fresh pins and post them every day. Um, but you don't need to build them from scratch. You can use the pins that you've already created and just make tiny adjustments, whether you change the font, uh, the main title of the pin, you swap out the image, um, just make little adjustments um, and you can just basically recycle the same pins over and over again. Um, a new feature on Pinterest is are the idea pins. Um, on Pinterest today, most idea pins are honestly just recycled TikTok videos. Um, so, and I see a lot of people taking content from other creators and posting it on Pinterest. As long as you leave a credit either on the a description of the idea pin or in the comments or both, um, you should be perfectly fine doing that. Uh, the idea pins do get great organic reach. Uh, the main problem is they don't have a link available to click on like the regular pins do. So I definitely uh, recommend to make sure you have your link in your bio. Okay, so as far as creating pins, I'm in canva.com. Uh, these are some pins I've created. Look at how simple they are. It's just an image. Um, there's two lines here, just kind of colored green and some text. Um, I always put my URL on here in case people want to steal my pins. It still has my URL on it. Um, really simple. Most of my pins are very, very simple like this. I don't put a whole lot of 
um, effort into making crazy pins, keep them simple, straightforward, make them like, you know, attractive looking. Like I have these nice photos here, nice clear images, really easy to read. Um, again, you, you can go on Pinterest for inspiration. Look at what other people are doing. Like you see, they're very simple. Look how simple this is. It's just an image with some text on it telling people exactly what it is. You want to do a lot of testing. This is marketing. Marketing is all about testing. Um, you don't know what's going to work until you do it. When you're just starting out, you're not going to know what pins are going to perform well. So you really just have to post a bunch at once and wait a few days or a week or two to see how they perform. And you can take your best performing pins and then go and try to make your future pins similar to that and see if you can bounce off that success. Just to give you an idea of how many pins you should be making, I have a lot of pins on my account. Um, you see they're all very similar, just this simple format, some text, usually a headline, a sub headline, and then an image, basic designs. If you look at the performance of these pins, most pins don't get any outward clicks. Uh, this, it's basically the amount of people who see the pin, amount of people who save the pin to their board, and then the amount of people who click on it and actually go to your website. Um, now this one has four clicks, this one has zero, 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 zero. Most pins don't get any outbound clicks, um, but then every once in a while a pin will go viral. If you look at this one, it has 30,000 views, 267 saves, and over 300 outbound clicks. And I think like two days ago it was under 200. Um, so, and I posted this I think like three weeks ago. Um, so the lifetime of a pin is very long, it will keep going. Um, so if a pin doesn't perform well in the first couple days, um, you know, give it some time, it might bounce back. Um, I have another pin that went pretty viral as well. This one has uh, 17,000 views, 62 clicks, um, and it'll probably get more. Um, you know, pins will pick up traction after some time, so don't worry about it. This is the long game. You can't expect immediate results with this. It might be a few weeks before you even get any traffic at all. Um, luckily, you can automate the process of posting these pins after you've created them. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a quick example of how simple it is to post a pin on Pinterest. Um, so I'm just going to switch this one out with a new image. So it's a fresh pin now. I'm going to download this. I'm just going to download this one image here. You can download all of these pins at once. Um, it's super easy to download from Canva, but I'm just going to click on this first one here. I'm going to download it and then I'm going to go back to Pinterest and I'm going to create pin. This is where you add your pins to Pinterest. And I'm just going to take it right here, if you can see this, and drag it. And there's my pin. Um, now they do recommend images that are 1000 pixels by 1500 pixels. This one's a little smaller. It's okay. Not the end of the world. But when you are uh, going through Canva, I definitely do recommend the 1000 pixels by 1500 pixels. Um, so you're going to add a title can be super simple, how to build your own home workshop. Don't worry about reusing titles for pins. Um, a description, again, you want to put keywords. So I'm just going to, I'm just, just for the example, I'm going to do a short, simple description, but learn how to build your own home workshop. Visit our website for woodworking tips and how to set up a complete small workshop on a budget. So again, you wanna, you wanna go for keywords. So go in the search bar, make sure you have a number of keywords that you wanna try to rank for and then include them in your description. And then of course you want to have the destination link. So I wanna have homestylehacks.com. Um, and now when you're promoting multiple products, um, each funnel, you're going to have a few different landing pages for your different products. Um, you definitely, definitely want to have a different URL for each one of those landing pages. Um, so that's why I, also why I recommend multiple products. That way all your pins are not directing to the exact same URL because Pinterest does prefer that you direct traffic to multiple different uh, URLs within your website, not just the same landing page over and over again. Um, so that's why I recommend promoting multiple products. Um, so you're not just sending all your traffic to the exact same URL. And then you want to pick a board up here. So pick something that fits uh, the best. Uh, let's say DIY home projects. And then you can publish it right away or you can publish it at a later date. And this is a great tool because you can 
do multiple pins at once and you could just do the same thing over and over again and you can schedule a whole bunch of pins all at the same time and then just hit publish and you can you can do a whole week's worth of pins right in one moment so you don't have to be on Pinterest every single day you can set it all up and it will be basically an automation automated traffic machine Okay, so the last thing I want to go over is just a little bit of a pinning schedule so you have some sort of idea of how, when you should be creating pins. I recommend three to five pins a day. Um, you could do more than that for sure, but you don't want to overdo it. Pinterest definitely recommends you uh, stay consistent. Um, so don't do more than you can keep up with for the next couple of weeks. Don't do 10 pins today and then never again, right? do three pins every day or five pins every day. And again, you can use the automated scheduler um, to sit down for a few hours one day, make a whole bunch of pins, upload them on the scheduler, and then just sit back and they will, they will post automatically for you and try to spread them out throughout the day. Um, as far as maximum, I wouldn't do more than 15 pins a day. Um, that would probably be too many. Pinterest might flag your account. Um, focus on the keywords and go for relevant keywords. Don't just try to rank for keywords that aren't actually relevant to uh, the product that you're trying to promote. And use the, use the search bar to look for those phrases. Um, try to keep all of your boards active. Um, don't leave any board inactive. If you didn't post on a board for a while, it might be a good idea to go in that, to just save somebody else's pin on that board, uh, just so it is an active account. And um, when you create, when you post a pin to one board, you want to post it to the most relevant board. Um, however, you might have a situation that one pin could fit in a different board as well. So you could go in your account and you could save that pin to the other board. That way it gives that pin a little bit more exposure, but don't overdo it. Don't save all your pins to all your boards. Only do that if it's a relevant pin to that board. Just a few closing words. Don't expect immediate results. This is a long-term play. Pinterest is not gonna give you a crazy traffic right out the gates. It's gonna take a few weeks to really pick up. Um, the lifetime of a pin can potentially last months. So you might think your account is not getting anywhere, but then all of a sudden you're gonna see a bunch of traffic come in. Um, and definitely keep an eye on your analytics. If you have the business account, even just the basic analytics that show you how many saves or clicks you're getting, and you can easily identify which one of your pins are performing better. And then when you go back in Canva to create more, you can kind of recreate th those pins. Um, when you're starting off, I recommend trying out a bunch of different pins. Um, but once you find out which pins work the best, then kind of stick to that formula. Um, and, and the same thing for your landing pages and the different offers you're promoting. If you're collecting emails and sending follow-ups, um, it's definitely important to do a lot of testing. You don't know what's going to work until you've tried it and it's proven to work. Um, and remember, stay consistent. Stay as consistent as you can for as long as you can. Um, affiliate marketing, it's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to make a bunch of money with one or two pins. You're going to have to stick with this for a while, but Pinterest can be a very powerful traffic source if you use it right. And don't forget to try out the new Pinterest features. Idea pins are giving incredible organic reach right now, um, especially the video style ones. You could go on sites like TikTok and find other accounts in your niche, download and upload their videos for, um, for views and traffic. Just make sure you credit them. Don't steal people's content and not give them credit. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope this gives you some clarity on my Pinterest strategy for affiliate marketing. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more, like the video, and I'll see you guys later.